All right. Thank you. Hi. Um, actually, before I start, um, as, uh, as Alex mentioned, we have another uh, real expert in the room, and that's Harald Avestron. Harald, sorry, you wave your hand there. So um, Harald was actually one of uh, the key initiators within Google for the WebRTC project um, many years ago. And he's also uh, one of the chairs of the WebRTC working group in W3C. So um, there's a man who like, knows everything right there. Um, feel free to ask him any question. OK. All right, so um, I'm going to do something unusual for me, and that is this presentation is not at all technical. So normally, I talk about standards. Um, I'm one of the editors of the WebRTC spec. I'm actually the uh, original and longest running editor of the WebRTC spec, uh, and also the media capture specification as well. Um, so I've been doing it since 2011. Uh, my degree is actually in, uh, in computer speech recognition, which has uh, very little to do with what we're doing in WebRTC. Um, but, um, but what I've done with that is a lot of standards work. I love doing standards work, and WebRTC is, is no different here. There is, I think, a real tremendous benefit in the world to creating standards that, that everybody can use. Um, this is my book. You may have seen it. It's actually available in Chinese and Japanese as well. Um, it's a little outdated because we're waiting for the, browser, the browsers to uh, implement the current spec. Um, and as soon as they get closer to that implementation, we'll put out uh, an update of the book. So it's pretty cool, the information that is out there today for WebRTC. So um, many of you are probably familiar with WebRTC Hacks. It's a great site for up-to-date uh, uh, blog posts on things that are happening with WebRTC, things that work, things that don't work. Um, there's a lot of information, of course, at WebRTC.org. There are conferences. Uh, this was the uh, WebRTC Expo, now called Real-Time Web Solutions. And Cranky Geek is pretty popular as well. Um, as I say, a variety of conferences. Uh, Tsahi's blog, which has just has had great information for many years now. Um, so clearly, um, if you're somebody who's, who's new to WebRTC, um, life is good. Um, but unfortunately, no, you don't. Um, I still hear complaints. When I speak at conferences of, of any sort, one of the things that I hear is that information is a little too scattered on the web. And it's often someone's spare time project. So there's good information there, but you cannot count on, on something important being there. And a lot of the information for WebRTC, or just real-time communications uh, technologies in general, is either behind uh, corporate uh, marketing, uh, and lots of it, um, or a referral to an expert, um, which you know, may or may not work for you. So one of the problems is that if you are the owner of a project that needs to use WebRTC, you need to come up to speed quickly. Um, you need to actually know what the real trade-offs are and basically not be stuck behind marketing and to have an unbiased perspective that is focused on you. So the real-time communications industry needs a voice, another voice. And it needs to be unbiased. Uh, that's actually really, really important. There's clearly something missing. And we aim to figure out what it is and to address it. And so I'm going to steal a quote here from Mario uh, Draghi, the uh, president of the European Central Bank in 2012. We are ready to do whatever it takes. And believe me, it will be enough. Okay, And that's how we feel. Um, we're going to keep trying different things until we get until we get to the point where we do not have people coming to conferences and saying, I don't know how to get the information that I need in the time frame in which I need it. So I'm going to just pull up the site and briefly walk through it. Um, of course, something happened to the screen. It didn't look like this when I tested it before. Lovely. Um, I'm sorry, what? Never do an interview with Jack. Yes, right. So um, 
Yeah, so that's Alex. Yes, it is. All right. Uh, so basically, right now I have a place for uh, articles on the site. Uh, most of what I have so far is interviews. Uh, turn, that turns out to be really popular, actually. Um, my goal is to get experts, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. But you'll see here that I've got an interview with Alex. Um, I talked with Varun last week about Quick and WebRTC because there's an interesting discussion that came up uh, about that last week. Um, I've interviewed Lorenzo, and it's in progress. Uh, Alan Johnston on SigSocket. So there's a bunch of stuff coming. Uh, Varun, actually, I have an, an interview early on talking about call stats. IO. So that's sort of in the article site uh, segment. Um, I do have a set of news links, and then this will be just news as it happens. Uh, but these are real news stories, and again, I'll talk more about that later. Um, but the point is, they're not ad news stories. They're news stories. Okay? There's a place where um, you can request something new. So if there's something you don't see on the site and you want to, this is an opportunity for you to tell us, and we will, we will find a way to make it happen. We have a uh, providers directory, which is growing, um, and we list uh, upcoming events in this space. So if you have an event, yes, this one, I know this one just happened. Um, it'll be coming down fairly soon, but this really just happened, the uh, Cranky Geek. Um, if you have an event that you want us to post here, um, please tell us about it. Um, I've had a number of people uh, who have existing events tell me that this is competition for them. It is not competition for them, okay? We want to point to anybody else who has something that they offer. If you offer a service, um, a product, anything, we want to point to you because we want to make it easy for people to find you when it's relevant for them to, uh, you know, when that's what they need. Um, and, and a glossary. Again, pretty simple to start, um, but we're going to continue growing and uh, do what we need to do to make it happen. So, you know, more specifically, who is this for? Um, for any of you who are programmers, essentially this is targeted at your boss, okay? It's the person who is responsible for a project. It's usually a, a technical team lead or a technical project manager. Uh, these are the people who really don't, they have a lot that they have to figure out in order to make a technical decision on how to move forward, but they don't have the time to really troll through a large number of uh, blog posts on a lot of different sites. And in particular, the marketing thing. I heard that over and over and over again. People would tell me, yes, I see their advertisements, I see the marketing they have, but I really have no idea why that company is any different from this other one because their marketing all sounds the same. So the goal is to focus on what matters. Okay, I'm actually very interested in precisely why a technology, a technology exists for call stats. Why did Varun create call stats? He didn't do it because he was bored. Okay, he did it because there was a need. Why did Alex and his team create Kite? Okay, again, not because he's bored with nothing else to do. There's actually a real need in the industry for that. And it's one thing to say you just need testing, but that's not what they did. They didn't just do testing. They actually looked at testing and how to do it right. What is it that needed to be done? So one of my goals is to allow experts to tell their stories. And some of the other experts that are in this room, I know some of you, and if I have not talked with you yet, I will. Um, and Harold is now looking away from me. I think that's probably on purpose, but um, I'll get him at some point here as well. Um, I mentioned before, I don't want ads that masquerade as articles. Uh, that may sound obvious, but when you read use case stories um, often on the web, they have company name repeat mentions like a hundred times throughout the article. And you don't really need to do that. Most importantly, if you're providing something that is of value, the people reading it will pay attention to where you come from, okay? But they really hate having to read through nonstop mentions about, you know, your product. Um, there, my goal is actually to be independent. I am independent right now, uh, and I intend to remain that way. There are no funding conflicts, okay? This is rather important. Uh, many of the sites you see will have uh, conflicts somewhere in the funding that they take. The goal is to build community, and this is not a side project. I do have staff, uh, and the staff is growing in what they do, and the amount of staff is growing as well on this. I mentioned before that the news links are real news. So um, technology announcements are great. 
um, not customer wins. Okay, typically, um, if you are interested in a particular company and how many customers they have, you can find that out pretty easily by just going to their website. You don't need this site to tell you about some particular company's customer wins, but you may need my site to tell you about something that they're doing that nobody else is doing. Okay, so technical feature announcements also go on there and any novel deployments as well. So we will be uh, starting to translate uh, into um, at least Chinese and possibly Japanese as well. We're going to consider other languages uh, as appropriate. Um, and I have some partners I'm discussing syndication with as well. Eventually there will be some focused meetups. There's no plan on exactly what that will be yet, but the um, but it will be based on where there seems to be a need or a lack, okay? So that's why I'm not going to tell you right now what it is. We'll see where we need to go. Um, currently, we're thinking we probably will have one in India early next year, um, but the exact uh, topic focus we're still working on. We would like to have some getting started guides. Um, I intended to write some of these myself, and then I thought, you know what? No, I actually want to get other experts uh, to do this. So if there's an area that you are an expert in, and it doesn't have to be WebRTC, but it can be anything that is related to real-time communications, and you would like to help with this, please do contact me because, um, again, this should be a source for people who want to know how to get started. Uh, eventually we'll be adding community forums, but it's too early right now for that. One of the other things that we will be doing very soon is an industry technology and capabilities survey. Um, if you give me your contact info, I will notify you when that's ready. Again, for the people in this room, you're probably not the right audience for that, but again, uh, you know, your, your boss is probably the, probably the one. So um, I actually need all of you. I need people who are experts with a story to tell. People who are creating the technology, uh, people who are implementing interesting applications. Um, I don't want marketing folks, okay? And how many people are going to get up and actually tell you that? Well, at te many technical conferences you will hear that, but it's amazing how, uh, how easily marketing fluff um, seeps into virtually every, um, you know, every technical site. I see a number of people nodding. It's, it's really quite aggravating. Um, yes, we need sponsors, okay? If you, well, you probably didn't notice on the site, Right now, there's only one ad on that site, and it's for my book, and that's just because it's a placeholder for, for sponsor ads. There will be ads because there are costs to run a site. Um, so we're working up what would be appropriate sponsorship packages. So if you have a company that might be interested in sponsoring, tell us what would be of value to you, okay? What would make you want to sponsor on our site? Um, the sponsorship goes to, initially it just said supporting me and my staff. We will have events and some of the money may go to some of the events in addition to having sponsors for specific events. But the point is, this doesn't go anywhere else, okay? It is for running this site for the community. Um, I've been working for this community doing standards for a number of years now and I want to see it, I want to see it succeed even more than it has so far. Okay, so how can you contribute? You can contribute content. Uh, I want articles. And by that I mean real technical or deployment articles. This is where you talk about the real problems that you had and the real solutions that you came up with. Um, you can, of course, mention companies that you used in order to do that. But the point is it needs to be something that is helpful to someone reading it who might need to make a decision. Uh, use cases, um, again, that's, uh, that's related as well. I mentioned the getting started, uh, getting started guides, um, and I'm happy to interview you as well. As I say, busy people uh, often don't have time to write articles, but they do often have time for a half hour interview. So if you have something that you know better than anybody else, come talk to me and I'll make sure you get a chance to tell your story in a place where it will matter. Uh, we are looking at potentially adding some guest blogs uh, on a topic of interest to the community, and this would be perhaps an ongoing blog on a particular topic. Um, so if that's something you want to do and you don't have a good place to do it, uh, let me know. If you happen to do something like that already through your company uh, and they're willing to allow you to cross post and have it be in both places, that's fine too. When we have events, 
participate. Uh, easy for me to say that because I haven't advertised any events yet, but it's coming. Um, just so you know, this is the first presentation I've ever given on this. Okay, so you're seeing it right at the beginning. Um, and I mentioned the requests. Um, and yes, I have to put this here. Okay, why sponsor? The intention is for this to be a global voice for the real-time communications industry, for the community and by the community. There are a variety of ways in which you can sponsor, and your sponsorship does not have to just be global on the website. It can be local to your region. We can do that. Um, I, I say offline sponsorship. That's, probably, that's most likely going to be in terms of events. Um, but again, the events will be small. And so, you know, as a, as a sponsor, um, it should be a good return for you in terms of the, uh, the amount it would cost to sponsor a small event. Um, and, you know, this is your opportunity to be part of, of growing the industry. Um, you know, if you work in standards, you believe in the bigger pie at a bigger slice of an existing pie, you want to grow the pie for everybody, and that's what this is about. Um, and actually, I just realized I talk about no ads, and this probably seems like one big long ad. Uh, it's actually not intended to be an ad that way, okay? I'm not specifically seeking money. This is really to be something for the community as much as possible. Okay. Thank you. Allthingsrtc.org is the name. Any questions?